January 1963, the Air Force initiated tactical weapons effects tests on realistic limited war targets. performance aircraft were typical of those assigned to tactical strike forces. Forces which are ready to act immediately in potential limited war situations. During the weapons effects test, they attacked difficult air and ground targets flying at high speed to ensure their survival over well-defended battle areas. More than 20 target complexes were chosen or constructed to simulate the range of ground targets likely to be encountered in limited war anywhere in the world. Included was a simulated anti-aircraft missile site patterned after those of Soviet design that were photographed in Cuba. Part of the test criteria was high-speed reconnaissance location of individual targets, delivery time of developed negatives and blow-up prints for photo interpretation was comparable to operational pre-strike missions. Prints were delivered to simulated Air Force Army command elements in between one hour and 40 minutes and two hours. Test missions against aircraft and air support targets began early in January. First test for the F-105 Thunder Chief and its high-speed 20mm Gatling gun was made against a radio-controlled jet fighter. High-explosive and armor-piercing incendiaries destroyed the fighter. F-100 Super Sabre was tested against a low-speed air target at 800 feet altitude. The attack aircraft destroyed a 13-foot radio-controlled simulated light plane flying at 180 miles an hour. With a jet fighter target, maximum range low-altitude tests of the Sidewinder missile were performed by the F-104 Starfighter. Evaluation of the Thunder Chief as a high-speed napalm delivery vehicle was made against parked jet aircraft at a simulated forward area field. Test for strafing damage against parked jet aircraft was made with the F-104's Gatling gun. F-105 was used to evaluate the high-velocity 5-inch Zuni rocket against typical airstrip targets. Napalm was tested for the first time against missile site type guidance control vans, F-100s, in low-level, high-speed attack. Against the simulated anti-aircraft missiles, Super Sabres tested the effectiveness of 20mm high-explosive incendiaries. Two point seven five-inch rockets with high-explosive heads were tested against a maintenance tent area, fired from a Super Sabre. The rocket's dispersal pattern provided lethal shrapnel damage and fire throughout work areas. A larger tent area where supplies would be stored in field conditions was attacked with napalm. High-speed F-84F Thunderstreaks accomplished this evaluation.
high speed was an important criteria in the tests to assure aircraft survivability over presumably well defended targets a test for pilot skill and guidance accuracy with the bullpup missile was conducted from a super saver target was a concrete bunker the instantaneous fused missile was launched at a slant range of 3.6 miles 250 pound warhead exploded on contact 25 feet from the aiming point. Results indicated that delayed action fusing is more effective for this type target. A command post bunker with three foot concrete walls was used to evaluate the Zuni rocket. F 100s were loaded with eight Zunis equipped with penetrating heads. Direct hits were scored at slant ranges of 3,700 to 4,000 feet. In the next scene, a flat-nosed bomb with a delayed fuse bounces off a wall as an F-105 makes a follow-up attack on the command post. This test was successful. Earlier test runs with too shallow an angle of attack caused the bombs to skip over the target. Close-in ground support attacks on mortar positions were initiated by the F-104. 2.75 high explosive rockets. Coverage was good. Damage included shrapnel hits on all test mannequins. Follow-up tests on other mortars used two F-84s releasing 3,000 pounds of napalm. Starfighters with 2.75 rockets made attacks on an artillery piece. Mixed loads were carried by three aircraft, half high explosive heads, half high explosive and a tank head. One of the rockets knocked out the 90 millimeter gun. Other hits were lethal for gun crews. A typical fuel dump was the test target for Gatling gun incendiaries fired by F-104s. Firing altitude was 800 feet. The bombing capability of the Thunder Chief was evaluated against large area targets. The weapons load was 16 750 pound bombs for each airplane. Convoy group was the target for effects testing of the F-105's Gatling gun. The effectiveness of high-performance aircraft against a low-flying helicopter was tested using a radio-controlled H-43A as a target. Attack speed was 460 miles per hour. One burst of 20 millimeter incendiaries from the F-1, the helicopter.
The target to test the kill capability of the Bullpup missile was a heavily armored tank. The Bullpup was launched by an F-100 from a distance of two and a half miles. was knocked out by a direct hit that pierced the top of the turret. The hatch cover and other parts were bound up to 200 feet away from the burning tank. Effectiveness test of napalm against convoy targets was carried out by four starfighters. Delivery was low and fast. The drop was a split second late. Destruction was limited to the forward part of the convoy. A jungle-style target used in the test was this four-section pontoon bridge designed to support two-and-a-half-ton trucks. A B-26 of the type used in areas like Vietnam made the attack with 2.75 rockets. Fours conducted an effectiveness test of napalm against tank targets. <laughs> test equipment inside one of the tanks showed severe heat damage. The effect of 2.75 rockets on a 105 millimeter howitzer comprised the next test. Launching aircraft was the F-100D. Coming up next, a target mounted camera shows the rocket pattern. and its self-propelled vehicle were crippled by the attack. A varied array of landing craft in anchored and beached positions were the test targets for combined attacks by fighters. Closely resembling combat tactics because of the number of aircraft involved, this series of attacks employed 20 millimeter cannon as well as Zuni and 2.75 rockets. The target area was particularly well adapted for recording the pattern spread of rocket attacks. The barges were aground in shallow water, permitting extensive documentation of all types of damage. Operating with weapons of great destructive power is inherently dangerous. A case in point was this rail cut mission. Armament was four flat-nosed bombs with delay fuses. The 14-second delay allows the plane to clear the target before the bombs explode. The attacking F-105 was accompanied by an F-100F chase aircraft. One bomb exploded instantaneously. Fragments hit both aircraft. A tracking mount on the ground picked up the chase aircraft, the more critically damaged of the two. Both men aboard the plane ejected successfully. Several miles away, the F-105 pilot also had to bail out. His controls locked and his aircraft shedding pieces.
all men survived with minor injuries. A test attack against immobile train targets was carried out by F-100s and F-104s. The first weapon was the bullpup guided missile. Two point seven five rockets with high explosive anti tank head. A strafing attack with armor piercing and high explosive incendiaries. Concurrent with weapons effects tests. The Air Force conducted tactical evaluations of its troop and cargo carriers. The YC-123H, grossing out at 62,000 pounds, landed 100 feet short and stopped in just over 950 feet. In addition to conventional engines, the 123H has two jet engines to shorten takeoff distance. Computed payload for the test was 20,000 pounds. This experimental aircraft has a beefed up and widened landing gear. Unloaded. 123H was able to take off in 750 feet. Tests were conducted with an unfavorable 15 knot quartering tailwind. The technique of heavy cargo extraction was tested with the long range C 130B Hercules. The aircraft does not land. Cargo, a 5,900 pound weapons carrier. Short field assault capability of the C-130B was tested on a soft clay strip. Grossing 119,000 pounds, the aircraft stopped in 1050 feet. Touchdown was at the 100 foot mark and stop was at the 1150 foot mark. same weight, the C-130 used the additional thrust of eight rocket motors to break ground in 650 feet. Range of the C-130 with a typical load of 64 fully equipped airborne troops is 3,600 statute miles. Further tests showed that after unloading, the aircraft could take off within 500 feet. As in combat, not all attacks were successful. There were misses as well as hits, and some weapon malfunctions. The test revealed areas where additional research and development is required to improve certain weapons and develop new capabilities. Invaluable training was accorded all test personnel, and the main purpose of the test was successfully accomplished. Data was gathered on the effects of specific weapons striking specific targets, all leading to increased tactical air combat capability. Here in review are some of the highlights of the test documentation. Guns. Rockets. Flatnose bombs. 750s, missiles, napalm, 